This is National 5, it's the Applications Unit Assessment. We're looking here at Standard 1.4, and that's Applying Statistical Skills to Analyse Data. We're going to use the, the Pegasus uh, practice paper here, and uh, we've got question 11 and 12 to complete, and you need half marks to, uh, to pass uh, the 1.4 outcome. Right, hopefully you can read this one here, it's a bit small on the, the screen, I think. I'll read that out for you. The cost of a set meal menu um, in seven different uh, cafe style restaurants were as follows. So we've got £14, £17, £13, £14, £11, £19 and £17. Part A. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of these costs. Okay, so we can go ahead and do that. The, the second part, part B, it looks as though we're going to compare some data. In seven upmarket restaurants, the mean cost of a meal was £22, with a standard deviation of 2.2. Uh, using these statistics, compare, uh, the, and it will be the prices we'll compare. We won't compare the profits of the two companies, and uh, we'll also make uh, two valid uh, comparisons. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start this question here. So to do the standard deviation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just create a small table on this side here. And what we're going to do is we're going to write down all the x values. I'll put the x values at this side, and I'll get all the x squared values at this side here. So I'm just going to write the numbers down as they're given. I don't need to put them in order, but just write them down as they're given here. I'll just extend this table a wee bit more. Okay, so we've got £14, I've got £17, £13, £14. 11, 19, and 17. Okay. So that looks like uh, seven, uh, seven restaurants that uh, are cafe style restaurants that we've looked at. Right, so the first thing I'm going to calculate in here is I'm going to add all of these numbers up. And that there just tells me it's going to be the sum of all the x's. So all the x's added up. So just get to my calculator. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go for 14 plus 17, plus 13, plus 14, plus 11, plus 19, plus 17, and then equals on that. So that's 105, okay? So that's 105. Now what I have to do next is, I have to get all the x squared terms over on this side here. Instead of working out 14 squared all the way down, uh, I think there's quite a high, high percentage of getting an error in that. I'm just going to write down 14 squared. 17 squared, 13 squared, 14 squared, 11 squared, 19 squared, and 17 squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all of these squared terms up, and what I'll be able to work out is the sum of all the, the squared terms. Right, so what I'm going to do in my calculator, I've got the numbers already in there, so I'm just going to go back all the way along to the start of this list, if you can see the cursor going back. And when I get to 14, I'm just going to put, press the square button. So that puts a square in. Move it along to 17, put a square in. Move it along 13, square it. So square it. Square it again. Square the 19. And square the 17. So the reason for doing that is that I've got all of the numbers already added up on the left hand column. And the thing is, all the numbers are already in my calculator, I've entered them. So if I just put a squared term after each of them, it's going to limit the uh, the mistakes that I could possibly make with uh, working out the numbers. Just going to press the equals button now, and what I get is 1621. So 1621, one, okay? And that equals the sum of all the, the x's. Now, the first thing I have to, to work out was the, the mean. So to work out the mean, or x bar, it's going to be the sum of all the x's, and I'm going to divide by the number that I've got of restaurants, cafe style restaurants I've looked at. So seven restaurants I've looked at. The total of all of these prices added up is 105. So the mean would work out to be, and it's in pounds, so that would be 15 pounds. What I'll then do is I'll uh, go and try and work out the standard deviation. And in the formula sheet, I should see 
a, a formula for standard deviation. In fact, I usually see two formulas. The, the one that you should use is just the one that you, you've been taught. And if this is not the method, then I would use the other method uh, to, to do the calculation in the table that you do. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the formula first of all. And the formula is, I'm going to be taking this here. So that's going to be the sum of all the x squared. I'm going to subtract from that the, uh, the sum of all the x's. And I'm going to square that. I'm then going to divide it by the number of cafes that uh, I've had in the survey. And then I'm going to divide it by one less than that number. Right, so when I work this through, I'm going to be doing the square root last. So make sure that's what you do when you work this one through. Right, so I'm going to put in my substituted numbers. So 1621 going in here, 1621. Minus, I've got 105. So 105 going in there, squared, all divided by, and it was 7, wasn't it? So that's going to be a 7 there. And this one here will be 6. Okay, that's 7 minus 1. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to extend that square root just so that I'm showing that it's over everything. It's not just the top line that I'm doing the square root on, so, so that's going to be that. In the calculator, I'm going to do the top line first. Okay, and the top line will be... Right, let's go for it. So I'm just going to type in 1621, or 1621. I'm going to subtract from that 105 squared divided by 7 equals, that's 46. So I'm going to put a 46 in here, and I'm going to do 7 minus 1 is just going to be 6. Okay. From there, I can work out uh, 46 divided by 7. Put an equals on that. So there's, there's the value there, and I'm just going to square root that. Okay, square root the answer, and that should give me 2.56. Okay. Let me just uh, check that one again. Okay, so I've got uh, the square root of 46 divided by 6. That's equal to that. I'm going to then take the square root of it. Yep. I've got, uh, what I've got here is uh, 2.76887. Okay, and from there, what I'll do is I'll just round that one there. It doesn't ask me to round it to any specific number. What I'm going to do is I'm going to round it to one decimal place based on what we're going to be comparing. So I've got a 2.2 there. So this will be 2.8. So a standard deviation there is 2.8. Right, so looking at uh, part B. In seven upmarket restaurants, the mean cost of a meal was £22 with a standard deviation of 2.2. So I've used the statistics and I'm going to compare the prices of the two companies and make two valid comparisons. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, on average, okay, and I'm going to say that that's based on the mean. Uh, the upmarket Restaurants, oh, market restaurants are more expensive. And that's going to be by uh, seven pounds, okay, based on the mean. So all I'm doing is comparing the two mean values, so the the fifteen pounds against the twenty two pounds that's there. The next comparison that I'm going to make is based on the standard deviation, and I'm going to say that there is less spread um, in the upmarket restaurants, because that's 2.2 .2 against the 2.8. So the smaller the number, the less spread. Okay, so there's less spread in the prices. Of the upmarket restaurants and that's just based on the standard deviation. So based on the standard deviation. Okay. Let's see how we're going to mark this one here. So what we're going to get, first of all, is we're going to get one mark for getting the sum of all the x's and the sum of all the x squared. So just one mark there. One mark for calculating the mean of 15 pounds. 
I'll get one mark for substituting into the formula, but working it through to here. Okay. And one final mark for getting the standard deviation. And that was this one here. So that's 2.8, and that was 2 one decimal place. I'm also going to get uh, one other mark, and this one here, we're going to get one mark for the, uh, the communication and relating it to context, and that's going to be a mark that's on a 2.2 a outcome, so that's, that's what we're going to get there. So one mark there, and there's uh, four marks up above, okay? So there are the marks that we're going to get for that question there. Okay, let's look at uh, question 12. And question 12 is a scattergraph question. Uh, a primary teacher took a note of the results in a spelling test and the number of hours of TV that some of her pupils were watching. She then drew the following graph. Determine the gradient and the y-intercept of the line of, uh, of the best fit. Right, so the line's already drawn in for us. Sometimes we have to create that line ourselves, but uh, since it's drawn in, I'm going to choose two points that are uh, on the, the line. So the first point that I'm going to choose will be, I'm going to go for 10, 22.5. I'm going to go for that one there. So let's see, so 10, 22.5. So first one for part A, 10, 22.5. And the other value that I'm going to choose, I'll choose this one here on the line, that's 40 and 7.5. So 40 and 7.5. What I'll do then is I'll uh, work out the gradient. So the gradient is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And what I'll do is I'll just substitute these values in uh, into the, the gradient equation. So here we go. So 7.5. Subtracting 22.5, all divided by 40, and we'll subtract 10 away from that. That should give me, uh, that's minus 15 on the top, and that's going to be 30 at the bottom, and that's going to simplify down to minus a half. Right, the other thing that I have to show, so I've got the gradient, uh, I've also to find the, the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is where it cuts through the, uh, the y-axis, or this here is the s-axis at this time. So it's going to be this value here that I'm going to be looking at. So straight away I can see that the c is going to be equal to 27.5, and that's the y-intercept. going to then work out the equation, the equation of the line, based on the values that I have here. So for part B, I'll just uh, gather them together in the form of y is equal to mx plus c would be the easiest way to do it, do this one here. So y is going to be equal to the gradient, which is minus a half x, and what we're doing is we're adding on the c value, which is the 27.5 there. So I won't just leave it like that because the, the axes here are S and H. So I'm going to change the, the X and the Y around to start with S is equal to a half H plus 27.5. So, so that's the, the equation of that best fitting line. I'm going to show you another way of doing that. And the other way would be by using Y minus B is equal to X, uh, MX minus A. Substituting a point in, I'm going to take the first point that I've got here, the 10 and the 22.5, and I'll just substitute the values in. So that'll be 22.5, gradients minus a half, and that'll be subtracting 10 there for, for E at the end. What I'll do is I'll just gather these about, and I'm just going to multiply by 2, and that's going to be minus 45. So uh, multiply out by minus 1 here, and I've got minus X, and that's going to be plus 10. Gather the numbers to that side there, so I've got 2y is equal to minus x, and that's going to be plus 55, and all I'll do there is I'll just divide by 2 to get a y is equal to, or that would be the equation of the line, but what I'll do is y is equal to minus a half x, and a half of 55 will be 27.5. So that's the same as that's that uh, equation there, and I'll just write it also in the s and the h form. Okay. That's that complete there. Part C. 
What I have to do is I have to estimate the mark in the spelling test if the pupils spent 25 hours watching television. So 25 hours watching television, if I'm going to look at that, 25 hours here, draw up where it meets the line of best fit, and across to here, that looks as though it's going to be 15 in the spelling test. So let's have a look at it in a different way and we'll use the equation to work that out. So I'll start with S is equal to so I have H plus 27.5. I'm going to substitute in the hours of television that's been watched. So I'm substituting H equals 25. And here we go. Minus a half, and that's going to be 25 plus 27.5. So half of 25 uh, with the, the negative sign there will be there. Gather that all together, and that should give me answer of 15 okay so and that's the, the estimate what I'll do is I'll just make a statement at the end just to conclude this one and I'll just say um, the pupil watching 25 hours of TV will achieve an estimated mark of 15 in the spelling test. And that looks like the, the question complete. So let's see how we're going to mark that one. So for marking, uh, the first mark I'm going to get is for substituting two points into the, the gradient equation. That'll be one mark. And finally for getting the, the gradient of a negative a half. That'll be another mark. Finding the C value, which is there, or we could have found it in uh, this, this method here just by getting this value that's here. So getting the C value, which is the y-intercept, and finally getting the formula in the S and H form there. So that's going to be four marks. The final mark that we're going to get for the work that we've got down here for C and for the communication is a mark an outcome 2.2, which is a communication explaining a solution or relating it into context. So that's only one mark that we've got there, and four marks for the rest.